Happy New Year, everybody. To celebrate, here's my review of Death Rally, originally for DOS, but later re-released for Windows, and finally remade for iOS, Android, PC, and Fire OS. And what you're seeing here is the original DOS version. This is a combat racing game developed by Remedy Entertainment and published by Apogee back in 1996 as a DOS game, and it later saw a Windows re-release as a freeware release, and finally a remake in 2011 that really doesn't have all that much to do with the original game. And it was actually the debut title for Remedy, who you probably know better for, of course, Max Payne, as well as Alan Wake, and more recently, Quantum Break. But believe it or not, they actually got their start with this particular game here, and you're probably also wondering, hey, wait a minute, DW, I thought you hate racing games. Yeah, generally speaking, I do. I find the mere concept of driving a car around a track to be incredibly boring. So what is it like when you add machine guns and landmines and stuff to the mix? Well, let's go ahead and find out and see how Remedy handled their first release as well. Well, as far as presentation goes, you're dealing with 2D pixel art from a top-down perspective on tracks that are partially designed with 3D models thrown in just to kind of shake things up a bit. It's not really impressive visually even for its time, although they did put some pretty decent effects in there like the streaks of blood when you run over bystanders, or the tire streaks that you get whenever you turn a corner and your tires can't really handle it and things like that. But other than that, the best that the visuals really manage is just being decent. There's nothing in here that looks bad, nor is there anything in here that looks particularly great. And even though I did, of course, correct it for the aspect ratio in the footage here, it does run in a 4x3 resolution, so that's something else to keep in mind. That said, the interface is pretty clean and easy to work with. The actual pixel art for, say, the character portraits is fairly decent, although it's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination. And it even has some pretty cheesy pre-rendered video for the various cutscenes throughout the game, although there's really only two major cutscenes, which are the intro cutscene and the cutscene that you get before you go against the adversary. And even though they really aren't that great from a quality standpoint, there's just this kind of cheesy charm to them that's kind of hard to ignore. Then you move over to sound design, that's where things get a bit messier. For example, the sound effects really aren't very good at all. Engine sounds aren't particularly good, the weapon sounds are downright pathetic, and the explosions really aren't impressive at all. There's really nowhere near enough beef to any of the sound effects in this thing. And the voice acting is limited to a few lines that are spoken throughout the course of the menus, as well as during a particular cutscene at the end of the game where it's putting you up against the adversary. All of said voice acting is pretty cheesy. I mean, just listen to it. That is one hell of a piece of machinery. As you can tell, it's not the kind of cheesy that's really entertaining and memorable. It's just cheesy and really just kind of bland and uninteresting. So the voice editing really doesn't help things out. And finally, you move on into the music, and you find that while the soundtrack is actually pretty decent and it fits the race theme fairly well, it's just not particularly memorable outside of the confines of the game. It is fairly generic music, after all. And when you put all that together, it means that the sound design is not remotely impressive, and the visuals have held up fairly well, it's just that they're not really impressive either, although those 3D models definitely look very, very dated at this point. But of course, what really matter here are the story, or rather lack thereof, and the gameplay. And the story in this is basically, you join up in Death Rally, which is a basically a combat racing league, and you try to earn enough money to build up your car to eventually take on the adversary, the king of Death Rally, and beat him in a one-on-one -on -one race. And that's the entire story right there. There's nothing more to it than simply, you want to race so you can beat the best and then become the best after beating the best. This means that the game relies entirely on its gameplay to bring things up, and that's where things do get a bit interesting. It starts you off with a really terrible car called the Vagabond, which is pretty much a Volkswagen Beetle. And you're also given a fairly small amount of money and you're basically given free reign to go racing and you can choose one of three difficulty tiers. There's easy where the most advanced car you're going to run into is the Sentinel, the medium where the most advanced car is gonna be the Wraith, and then there's the hard tier where they introduce the Deliverator, which is the most advanced car that you can get in the game. And as you go up, of course, in the ranks, the payouts are higher and, of 
course the opponents are more difficult to beat. And as long as you place at least third in a race, then you do get some payout, but you won't get the full payout unless of course you win first place. If you make fourth place, then you don't get anything for that race. And of course you win races by either crossing the finish line or eliminating all of the other racers. That's where things get a bit more interesting than your typical racing game, because not only does your car have machine guns on it, but you can also buy a bunch of different items to give you even more offensive bonuses, like spiked bumpers that will cause you to do more damage whenever you crash into an enemy car, or mines that you can lay around the track and just hope you don't hit one yourself, because you can't actually run over your own mines. And those can, of course, send the enemy cars flying back a bit, and they also do a pretty large amount of damage to them. If you manage to do enough damage to an opponent, then their car bursts into flames and they're eliminated from the match. If you defeat all of the other opponents by simply eliminating them, then not only do you win the race, but you actually get a bonus amount of cash from the Reaper who's like, good job, you eliminated everybody else. Here's a big bonus for you to mess around with. And even better, if you manage to eliminate all the other opponents and you manage to get out of that particular race with barely any damage to your car, I believe it's less than 5% damage, then you get an additional bonus from a guy who's like, man, you got out of that pretty much without a scratch. Nice! There are also other events that you'll run into throughout the course of playing that will give you certain tasks that will allow you to get even more cash. For example, there's certain tasks that will be like, hey, I've got this bet riding on this match to where this one particular guy gets eliminated. So if you manage to eliminate him and you get to the end of the match, then you of course get a bonus for eliminating him. The thing is that if you manage to lose that particular mission, then instead of actually winning that bonus, you actually have to pay money for it. This means that the missions are a very calculated risk that you have to take. Do you think you can actually take this guy out of the match? Well, if so, then go ahead and take the thing. And if you manage to do it, then you get the bonus. If you don't manage to do it, then you have to pay out. And if you don't have enough to pay out, well, then you might lose an upgrade on your car. And the thing is that you really do need all the bonuses that you can get in order to be able to afford the various upgrades that you're going to need to be competitive, as well as the new cars that you're gonna have to get to be able to move on to the higher tiers. This means that especially early on, it can feel like a complete grind when you're messing around with the very early cars that all suck, and then you're trying to earn enough to be able to afford the better cars than that, and move on into the higher tiers where things get a bit more interesting. As you win races, you win more and more points that add on to your rank, and eventually once you hit rank 1, then you're forced into racing only against the adversary, whether you're ready for it or not. And if you're going up against the adversary, then you need the absolute best car in the game, as well as every single upgrade for it, as well as every single special item that you can get. The bumper, the mines, and the rocket fuel, in order to even be remotely capable of keeping up with this guy, because quite frankly, the adversary is bullshit. Even with every single upgrade you can get, his car is faster than yours. He's also immune to the sabotage option that you get where you can actually cause damage to an opponent's car before the race even begins. So basically, it's just a one-on-one -on -one against him. His car is just flat out better than yours. And so you have to either get really lucky or you just have to eliminate him as best you can, which means that you need to use everything at your disposal and not screw up at all. This means that whenever you see a power-up on the track, you need to get it, and you especially need to get every single turbo power-up that you can possibly get in order to be able to remotely keep up with this guy, since it's a 9-lap race. And to this day, even though I've owned this game for, I actually think, more than a decade at this point, I still only managed to beat the adversary once, and that was pretty recently and I only managed to beat him by eliminating him from the match. And even that was down to the wire, because he can take a rather large amount of damage before going down. But the thing is, once you beat the adversary, you're done. It's game over, and then it brings you to the high score screen, where it's like, okay, so now you get a high score for beating the game, congratulations. And then you have to either load a save game or start all over again. And all that's really going to entail is maybe you change the color of your car and your portrait, which have absolutely no effect on the gameplay whatsoever, other than the fact that if you pick the Duke Nukem portrait, then he goes, Let's rock. Let's rock. 
But other than that, it is the exact same progression of cards. You'll run into the same events throughout the course of the game, although they might be moved into different locations because they're kind of randomized. You've got all the same upgrades, all the same power-ups on the field, which are just extra money, the repair for your vehicle, extra ammunition to be able to shoot at the other opponents, and of course the turbo meter. You're running into all the same opponents on all the same tracks, which are about 19 tracks, many of which are basically just rotated 180 degrees and recolored, which is kind of lazy. And it's all working toward the same exact goal, which is just to beat the adversary. So if you don't like the core gameplay, then you're really not going to get much out of Death Rally, and the problem is that it becomes incredibly repetitive incredibly quickly. Like, all racing games, really. The main difference is that this one has machine guns and sabotage and mines and such like that, as well as bystanders on the side of the road that you can run over, but other than that, it's just another racing game that happens to be from a top-down perspective. Mechanically, it's mostly fine, although it does become kind of annoying if you get stuck on the environment and end up bouncing off of it too many times, which can happen every so often, particularly if you're a crappy driver. But other than that, and the really, really terrible performance of the first two cars that you get, it's really just a fairly average top-down racing game. There was multiplayer in the original DOS release, but good luck getting that to work on modern systems because it ran over IPX connections and such like that, which were a pain in the ass to get working back in the day, let alone now when we use completely different protocols. The thing is that even though I find racing games to be some of the most ridiculously boring games on the planet, I can still on some level recommend Death Rally as a competent racing game in the style of a top-down combat racing game. If that's your thing, you probably will be able to enjoy Death Rally, and in fact, you probably have already played Death Rally. If you haven't, if it looks interesting to you, if it looks like something that would be up your alley, I can say give it a shot, because at the very least, it is a competent game. The problem is that it does end up being very, very grindy throughout the entire course of the game, but especially early on. When you're stuck with the absolute worst car in the game, and of course the second worst car in the game, and how incredibly bad their upgrade pads are. But if you can get past that, you may be able to enjoy Death Rally. The thing is, it's going to rely entirely on whether or not you like combat racing games. In my case, it was better than playing a normal racing game, but that's really not saying much, because I'm pretty sure watching paint dry is better than playing a normal racing game. But if for some reason your brain is wired the wrong way and you actually do enjoy racing games, then you may want to give it a shot. I will of course have a link in the video description box to where you can pick this up if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and welcome to the new year, everybody.